Quintessa, welcome to Comic-Con. Congratulations on the Hall H reception to Black Adam. First of all, how did it feel to be on the stage in Hall H after all these years of hard work to now be able to see it with all the fans? I mean, it was incredible. The energy in Hall H is also like insane, like unmatched. And so that just like helped a lot of it too, but it also made it feel like way more like personal and way more honest. And then I just like, you know, just I don't know, just I felt so connected to the whole project and also to my counterparts and everything. Like it was like amazing, honestly. That, the energy in there is unmatched. When that bass goes and you feel it through the floor, right. oh my god. But so you guys the, the movie's finished now. You got to watch it for the first time. What what was the what, give me your review uh, honestly. I, and you could be as excited about it as you want to be. Oh, like incredible. <laughs> like no lie. Like I, like again like I watch like so many superhero like films and like across like genre whatever world universe like whatever and then also watch like so much with like CGI just to get like comfortable with like CGI and everything and like when I saw like our film it just like stood out so much because I was like I don't think I've seen this at all you know I can't, yeah. I can't wait to see it because the footage the few minutes of footage we just saw like blew my mind I can't imagine what the whole movie's like yeah. Like fuck, like when. <laughs> yeah, I mean literally. When, that's the only way. <laughs> no, when uh, when DJ when uh, Black Adam started zipping or not, no, I don't know. I didn't say anything. No, but we'll keep it, we'll I never heard of that other guy you just named. I only know Black Adam. Yeah, yeah, facts. <laughs> he doesn't exist. When you got cast as Cyclone, did you go back to the comics? Did you get the first appearance of the of the character in in DC Comics? What was like the first thing you did to really immerse yourself in the role? Uh, yeah, I like looked up an insane amount and then also like by like DC got sent like a lot of like information about her like if she was referenced or whatever and so that was really amazing too and also just the learning process you know like I had known a little bit but not really of like the JSA um, but yeah it was it was just incredible and so yeah it's probably an awesome experience so I'd love to hear from your perspective how can you how would you define her power set because we got a, a look at it like visually it looks incredible on screen w what was it like to like learn how to pull off the power set, see it on screen for the first time, and how would you describe it? Hmm, I would describe it as like, the way she emits her powers is like a dance basically. And so like that movement and what that movement look looks like, like almost like contemporary dance is, um, yeah, that's how the powers move. I don't know if I can explain it like a lot. But, no, that's like, fine, don't get yourself in trouble. Did that call for like a specific type of training for the like the choreography of how to move and how to execute the powers? Yeah, I had like actual like dance training, which was like really amazing. But it was all like really inspired by Loie Fuller and um, like Alvin Ailey, who I like really look up to, like that whole company. And yeah, it was just really amazing. So I had a double and she was a professional dancer and we just like moved and jammed and tried to figure out where Cyclone moved like in her body, which is like really cool, so. That's really cool. It looks like you did a great job from the limited parts I've seen. And uh, now that the DC Universe just keeps getting more and more heroes, this, this movie's bringing a whole batch of its own. What, do, what do, does your character play well with others? What, do, what does Cyclone think of every other hero in the DC Universe? Oh, inspired. You know, I think like, well, she's still figuring out like who she is and who she is like alongside of all of those heroes and also like vigilantes. And I think she's still, you know, just like trying to navigate it. And, and along with like Adam Smasher as well, they're both just trying to figure it out and figure out which side that they're on. Cause this is like her first time yeah. ever being a part of a team and also like pretty much ever like using her powers on the scale that she is. I can't wait to see it. Well, thank you so much for stopping by. Enjoy the rest of Comic-Con. Of course, you too. Noah, welcome to San Diego Comic Con, man. You're fresh off the stage at Hall H. 7,000 people, myself included, just got an awesome look at Black Adam. Oh, man. How was it up there? It was uh, mind blowing. So awesome, so much fun. I just, I can't, you know, I'm hella grateful to be a part of this beautiful, wonderful cast and incredible, incredible creatives. It's surreal. There's no energy like that room. The energy you guys have together on stage, I could tell you had a fun time filming it. Give me, your, give me an introduction to your Adam Smasher. We saw you in the costume. We saw you using the powers. The, tell me about it. You know, Adam, Adam Smasher, Albert, he, you know, he, uh, in the comic books, you really see him as a fully formed superhero, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, in this film, it's, it's kind of the before for him. And you get to see a metahuman, young man, young metahuman, learn what it means to be a superhero and, and, and how to be a superhero. Um, he's a, he, like I said, he's young, right? So he's, a, he's an individual that comes from a pedigree of superheroes, right? Good and, and bad, which is, a, which is a complicated past because of the, the kind of the forced villainy of his, of his grandfather. Um, 
but then he turned out to kind of sacrifice himself as well and 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 for the for for everyone so so anyway so coming from that pedigree you have someone that wants to prove himself as a, as a superhero who wants to find his way in life and i think we can all totally identify with that did you get to explore the fan the family lineage in the movie like do we get to hear about that kind of stuff a little bit there's a little bit there's a little bit in there that you get to see but it doesn't really touch up it doesn't touch on on parts of it but it's definitely present and it's it's a part of us a part of him and you'll see how it informs his character for sure so meat on the bone for the next one for, for the jsa movie you know, that, you know? <laughs> i'm here if you guys want me to be you know, did promise. you did you go uh did you get any comics to prepare did you read anything did anybody gift you anything are Please. you a collector at all i'm i don't Actually, now I guess I am, but I was not. <laughs> <Good> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I actually have the the first comic book that Adam Smasher ever appeared in, uh, which I thought was super cool. My buddy Ryan Orange, who's my encyclopedia when it comes to all things comics, um, he got that for me, and I thought that was so sick. I went back and read a lot of the Black Adam stuff, um, like like all the, the different volumes, and I thought that was really engaging. But and then I also have the newest. I have the Hawkman. Black Adam that just came out, and then I have uh, the the Black Adam from before that as well. Yeah. That's cool. It's, I love to hear. I love I love I you guys. To, I need to collect way more. Clearly, I mean, you're in the right place. If you can if you can get through the floor and survive it, they have everything down there, man. Oh, man. So I, I love you when you join a world like the DC universe. There's tons of heroes. This movie itself is bringing a whole new batch of heroes. What does Albert think of? people like the Justice League, people like Black Adam. I imagine they're very different opinions of all those kind of people. So, yeah. So, and that's actually something that's interesting about uh, Quintessa's character as, as well, Maxine, is we kind of bring, both bring fresh but different perspectives on the ethos of Black Adam's morality. Okay. You know, like, uh, and, and I, which one that I'm, I can't wait for people to kind of see because I think there's definitely sides to this story, right? Um, which also I love about Albert. He's very open-minded. He's powerful, and he, but he's just excitable and he's like, wants to... Um, <laughs> It's like so cool, dude. But but yeah, like you really get to see. It asks a really really important question about morality, and um, yeah, it's yeah, wild. Oh, yeah, so yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna end it with this. The first time you put the costume on and you see yourself in it, is is that thing comfy? Is it is it? Oh, actually, yeah. It actually, nice, <laughs> it actually nice. is good. it's nice and tight too. So like like me like I. I'm like hyper mobile, right? So this thing like holds everything in place, which is quite nice, actually. <laughs> there you go, dude. I can't wait to see you, man. Congratulations oh. on being part of this. Looking forward to seeing the whole movie. Thank you so Talk much. Talk to you soon. Man. Aldous, man, welcome to San Diego Comic-Con, fresh off the Hall H stage. Yeah. The energy in there was incredible. The footage was dope. How did it feel to be out there at Comic-Con? It's amazing, man. It's unreal. The people, the energy they give, man, it's it's... It's insane. It's insane. It's the best place to experience. Like, there's nothing else like that. Nothing else, man. It's like, it feels like a concert. It, it is. It's a concert for us fans, man. It really is. You, uh, you got to watch the movie, the full Black Adam movie, just before this. What was that like for you? Tell me about it. I might. How does it end? Things. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I might have seen some things. I might not have seen some things. But what I did see is pretty freaking fantastic. Um, I will say, as a superhero fan, a fan of all the superhero movies, this is something that is elevated in a very different way. When DJ says the hierarchy of you know, DC is about to change, he really means it. And when people see this film, they're going to understand that they're not ready. They not the ready. Footage we saw today, like there, I haven't seen anything like that. It's been, it was awesome. Hey, look, man, that's Jean Macalester, our fantastic director, and his vision, and also Larry Sher, who's our DP. The way he lit this, the way he shot it, that tag team, unstoppable. Unreal. Now I know you're a fan of superheroes. What was your introduction to Carter Hall? Do you remember the first time you, you met Hawkman as a character? And were you what, what kind of comics were you ever into or, or movies or shows that really get you excited when you come to an event like this? I feel like my first introduction to Carter Hall was probably a just, just, through Justice League. And then I was able to tie him back to JSA. But it was definitely through Justice League comics back in the day. Yeah, man. And I was like, okay, cool. He's like... He's both, <laughs> you know, yeah. and then I realized, okay, he's both because he's old as hell, which is awesome because he continually reincarnates. But once I started understanding the true nature of his powers or the source of his power, but then also why he reincarnates, that in itself is incredible. That whole backstory is insane. They did their work on that. So I can't wait to, I hope I get a chance to explore that. Uh, dude, how much of like the powers, I mean, the, the co I want to actually start with the costume yeah. because you look incredible. I see in the footage, I don't know if this is in the trailer that was online, but in the footage in Hall H today, you guys clash. 
you come swinging at Black Adam and it's a fight. How much of that the the how much of what you're wearing, what you're holding, the wings, are, how much of it is real on the sets? Are you wearing? You don't know if we clashed. Like he could have been coming in for a hug. You don't know. Maybe. Yeah, it did cut. You really it don't know. Um, so uh, for the so the entire suit was real. It's very real, very heavy. <laughs> um, and for the wings, uh, you know, sometimes there was a little computer help, and then sure. other times, you know, maybe I had like a you know a little weighted something on the back but uh with us uh i mean i was flying in the air quite a lot i lived basically in uh a harness i lived in the air for for most of our filming so i felt like i had wings for real <laughs> um but no the suit is real honestly actually designed by one of my partners it's designed at uh legacy but um the guy who put the work in his name is darnell eisen brother is incredible that's awesome. I appreciate you shouting him out. That's really cool. Dude, I can't wait to see the whole movie. Thank you so much for stopping by. Enjoy Thank it. Thank you. Beauty here at San Diego Comic-Con. I got the producers of Black Adam with me, fresh off of an epic Hall H display. First of all, what was it like to be in the room with that energy, feel the floor moving with the bass and the people cheering? Uh, well, I was in Hiram's arms. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, don't be shy right now. Just hold me because I was just so excited and overwhelmed by the energy, the feeling, Dwayne Johnson in the costume. Dwayne Johnson just, you know, the most electrifying entertainer in the world. And, and then to end it with a five-minute clip for the fans, right? That just really, I thought, killed. I mean, I thought I was watching it for the first time. Yeah. And we've been, like, talking about this piece for months. And it was, it felt, it felt great. I mean, this is a dream. Yeah, and this is your dream is to be able to come back and put this in front of the fans. 6,000 fans. Look, Hall H does it right, man. They pressurize. For the base heads, there's a lot of subs in that room. That room is pressurized. You feel the impact of it. And to see him DJ in front of the crowd, no one's better in front of a live audience. Presenting that footage and seeing the fans react to it, it was awesome. This is what we've been working for. And every day we get a little bit closer. And... The anxiety and the excitement in us to finally release it to the world, it's, it's fantastic. It's a balance you have to find between being the producer of the movie and at the same time being a fanboy, right? Like, it's like, and really, like, and you get lost in it. And I think that's something that we, we're really proud of is that we still can, like, not be cynical and that we can still become just a fan and audience member and just look at that and just, like, really kind of be in awe, you know? I'd love to hear, I mean, I've described the, what I saw online, and I, it was gritty, it was raw, it was like, it was fun, but it was also, I mean, intense. How well does the footage we saw today in Hall H capture the tone of what we're going to see when we see the full film? Oh, it absolutely captures the tone. That's the reason why we really wanted to present that footage. We wanted something to make sure, especially the Comic-Con fans, you know, the, the fans who, are, who know Black Adam so well, to show them something that said, guys, we've heard you. We know what the Black Adam character is. This just shows you the tone and the style of the movie. You're going to have fun. It's going to be a fun ride, but it is edgy, and we don't hold back in terms of how aggressive and, and violent Black Adam is. Yeah, I mean, we set the target really high. And um, we felt we knew what the fans wanted, being ones ourselves. And um, I don't know, I think that piece really reflects the movie top to bottom. The movie is exactly two hours. I think the movie really delivers on heart, on emotion, on pain, on struggle. Um, and the characters are so unique and different. I haven't really seen those characters in a superhero movie, so we're fired up. You also visually, some of these powers of these characters are incredible looking, like the, seeing Black Adam move, the way he can go up and come back down, seeing Cyclone kind of dancing while showing off her power set, Adam Smasher growing, Dr. Fate manipulating reality, looked incredible. Were there some challenge? Were any of the characters particularly challenging or exciting to get to display what they're capable of visually? Oh yeah, I mean, Dr. Fate is, you know, that's a full CG, that's also a full CG suit. Oh, wow. And the minute that we hear that as producers, we're like, that's, that's not possible. You know, and that was one really where- Until it is. Until it is, <laughs> until it is, exactly. And that's where Jam, our director, and Bill Wessenhofer, our visual effects supervisor, is like, no guys, we can do it. And we, you know, we pushed them and we asked for tests and we wanted to see it. And then now when you see it in the final movie, it's it's incredible. It really exceeded all expectations. But, but all those effects were challenging. I think the way we approached everyone, all the stuff you see Black Adam do, the way he flies, it had never been done before. That that, that version of technology, uh, bringing you know Cyclone to life, the way we had Cyclone moving on screen, Smasher, like it, there was a real fun challenge. Hawkman, how we manipulated Hawkman, how we used the wings, how we utilized Nth Metal, the ideas that we had behind how his Nth Metal is applicate, you know, is applied to his suit and how he gets his strength, like. 
like that's all the stuff that I know us nerds love but I mean it's like we put real thought into like alright how does he utilize nth metal and how is that going to apply on his body and utilize the wings and everything so we had deep deep talks about it and, and I thought our team did a really good job of bringing it to life. We ended up with all kinds of new technology that never been used before and that's also really exciting for us to geek out on and really try and some things you really some things work some things you don't but that's how but you have to push the limits you have to try new technologies and you know new methods looks like it paid off because visually it's, it looks incredible already from the five minutes i have seen if you guys want to go watch it i'm down <laughs> the, whole, the whole two hours i got no, i got nothing uh i, I do want to hear this is a, a universe where other superheroes exist what does a character like black adam think about I, characters i imagine are quite famous in this world but also they're clearly clearly heroes well, I think for Black Adam, I think when he looks at the world, he's learning about these characters, but I think he's a little bit puzzled by some of their um, moral standards, right? You know, I think the idea of that they live up to certain tropes that heroes should do, and I think he questions that and doesn't understand why. Well, why would I release this person who's going to hurt other people when I can resolve it now? And I think Black Adam, um, you know, he likes to live in the gray, and so I think for him to witness heroes and the heroes that are worshipped and understanding, well, what's the point of wearing a cape? I don't understand that, and why am I going to set this person free? We love him testing the tropes that we're so familiar with in the superhero world and seeing him learn about it. And throughout this journey, you'll see him kind of have a, a, a new perspective, but it's something that will continue to evolve. Who's this guy? Yeah, yeah. This? yeah what's going on here? Huh? Bunch of dudes. Ears were ringing. Just a Talk bunch of dudes, dudes hanging around. Dude. Just a bunch of dudes talking shit. <laughs> we were hoping that that big guy in the blue shirt wasn't going to come crash. What's up, Brandon? Dude, good to see you. Buddy, good to see you. Good to see you, man. How was Hall H? My friend, guys. Yeah, we know. <laughs> Can we all talk? Let's all do this again. Hop in. I, well, I'm going to come to you next then because you just walked out on the Hall H stage in a full-on Black Adam costume, electrified the room, the most electrifying man in San Diego Comic-Con history. What was that like? It, excuse my language, it was fucking incredible. And I will never forget that. And as you know, and as these guys know, I've, I've been able to have moments similar to that where there's a lot of people and there's frenetic energy and they're going crazy um, but that was so special because they did not expect to see Black Adam in costume levitating uh, and doing everything that Black Adam was doing but that energy was really incredible and then that between that the footage uh, getting to know the cast first uh, before we showed the footage, then, you know, giving 6,000 fans, like, you're going to be the first to see Black Adam. Here, there's your gift. Thank you guys for being amazing. Thank you for sleeping out the fucking sidewalk, you know, all night long. Like, what I want to say, too, is to that is not only was it fantastic, but look, movie stars are the busiest people in the world. And it's really hard to promote these things because they're doing so much. This was all DJ's idea. So DJ wanted to come to Comic-Con. He wanted to put on the suit. He wanted to do something that had never been done before. How can I get in front of the fans, connect with the 6,000 fans? It's an honor for us when we're working on this movie and then you have the biggest movie star in the world being like, guys, we got to do more. We got to do more. I want to bring it to the fans. And for him to come up with this idea and then see it executed. This was a spe this was a special moment. This We're here really at six thirty this morning rehearsing this. You know, yeah. I mean, it's like that stuff that you just don't you see, and that's six thirty. Yeah. yeah, to rehearse this. Yeah. You were up for five hours by then, right? Oh, yeah. Two we hours. <laughs> yeah, I slept yeah, I twice, been. drank. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I, I mean, I, I want to compliment the speed with which you changed. I don't know how you pulled that off. I know those suits aren't easy to get in and out of. But on that note, we saw Black Adam moving fast and doing all kinds of crazy. Th he electrocuted a man down to his skeleton. Yeah, tell, tell me about Black bringing Black Adam's powers to life and it like all right we're gonna nerd out here for a second okay because listen dude listen so that was one of the it, it was one of the anchoring elements why I wanted to make Black Adam and become Black Adam and why these guys are like let's make Black Adam because when you think about it pound for pound so compare let's compare him to the man compare him to Superman pound for pound he's close he's close but the difference is rage violence and it's those kind of killings <laughs> that you saw. But also, I have to, around every corner, give credit uh, to our director, John McCallette who had a vision, who wanted to make the Dirty Harry of superheroes, and where he was violent and full of rage and uncompromising. And we truly went into this, Brandon, with this idea. And this is so ambitious right now, but it's a perfect place to tell you guys this is, 
Well, how can we create a movie that hopefully can create a shift and change in the DC universe where you start to feel, yes, I've been saying the hierarchy of power, but just where you, sh you're, you could feel a shift in, oh, is this a new era? Ushering a new era in the DC universe of tone and sensibility and violence and, and walking that fine line between, is he a bad guy? Is he a good guy? Do you understand? Do you agree? Do you empathize? And at the end of the day, man, what you saw that footage, right? Just before you walked over here, we were talking about what Black Adam thinks of other heroes. You mentioned Superman. I'd love to hear your perspective. What does he think of guys like that? And I have to ask, have you talked to Henry at all about what that interaction might be like? What, what, what was the question? You asked the question before that. What does Black Adam think of heroes like Superman and the Justice Leaguers, who I imagine are very famous in this world? And have you, have you and Henry talked about what that, what that showdown might look like if it ever happened? I will say this. I will, I will say that... Um, I will say that Henry's a buddy and he is a phenomenal Superman. He is a phenomenal Superman and Henry Cavill is the Superman of our generation. With respect to the other Supermans in the, in the past and every time I see him, we have some tequila, I always say, that's Superman. And these guys will attest to that. So. Um, my longtime business partner, Danny Garcia, who you know, uh, who's, uh, you know, his sister, um, she has been a passionate advocate for Henry Cavill and his career uh, for a very, very long time. So there, the reason why I say all that is because there's a, you got a lot of people who advocate uh, on Henry's behalf and root for him to win. And I do root for him to win. And at the end of the day, he is a phenomenal Superman. Same page there, and I'll end it with this. I know you all just got to lock the picture. It's done with. That means you're, I don't know what that means. Almost is next done. for Black Adam. Almost yeah. done. How does it feel to have seen the cut and be able to kind of take the next steps now? Oh, well, this is, I mean, we've been working on this movie for a long, for a long time, talking about it as long as I've known Dwayne and, and Hiram. And, you know, to be in Hall H, to be in Comic-Con, and something, too, which I can't say enough, to be with Dwayne Johnson, the first time he's ever been a superhero in his entire career. It's, Thank you. It is an extraordinary, extraordinary privilege for me as a filmmaker and producer and to do it with my, my brothers, Hiram and Dwayne is amazing and to have a movie that we're so proud of. Yeah. I mean, it took, it was hard. It would took, it's, some people ask us what took, because you, it, you can't just make something out of nothing. You get, it really takes the time and we've spent a lot of time, a lot of meetings thinking about it, pitching on it, talking about it. And, and, and if you think about it, back in 2014, I think it was, when we all decided like, hey, look, we're, we're going to make Black Adam. And... We make the announcement. There's a great picture of me in front of the DC logo, yep. and then the studio puts out a <laughs> puts out a an agenda, of basically of like, okay, Black Adam's going to get made in eight years or whatever. We're like, Hold on a second. No, but we got Flash and we got Wonder Woman. And we got Black I know. Do your fucking history and research. No Black Adam's mythology. And then and here we are. So which was totally I, meant to be, and this is the was, exact right well, I, time. I was just going to say that, and that, that that was my point on this is uh, we didn't want to rush, but it all happened in the way that it needed to. So all those other movies had to come out before Black Adam for us to come out now, so people could start to feel the shift. I was still in school when you were cast. That's insane. I was still in college when you were in South Carolina, now Nashville. That's right. That's right. Well, guys, I got to let you get on with it. Thank you so much for stopping by. Congratulations on the epic reception. Cannot wait to see the whole movie. Always a pleasure, guys.